One lethal gunshot. They come in the door. Within seconds, one of them shoots your brother in the head. Right. Five eyewitnesses. They know they just ain't telling. Zero suspects. Snitches get stitches. These are the circumstances surrounding the murder of legendary Music Hall of Famer Run DMC's Jam Master J. Tricky, 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 tricky. That's tricky. They establish themselves as the Beatles of hip hop. Now, what's it like for you to stand here where your brother was murdered? Oh, it's eerie. Crime Watch Daily returns to the scene of the crime, hoping to solve the unsolvable. Is there any doubt in your mind that your brother knew his killer? No. Jason Mizell, AKA Jam Master J, grew up in the Queens neighborhood of Hollis, New York. The youngest of three siblings, he took an interest in music early on. He always loved music, and I allowed him to play the music and then dance in the house, whatever, you know. But uh, I didn't know it was as serious as it was. Then came an opportunity. Like called a battle, DJ battle, it started in the park. A place where neighborhood friends started to hone their musical skills as a trio. When it came about with Run and D getting together, and they called Jay in. From DJing in the park to center stage with Grammy Award winning group Run DMC, selling out stadiums in the mid 80s in what was branded a new school of hip hop, which sampled rock music. Raheem from the group Grandmaster Flash toured with Run DMC. He remembers Jay as the kind of guy who would help friends and strangers alike if they were in need. Jam Master Jay single-handedly helped to commercialize uh, rap music. Then just five years after their first album, rap music changed. There was a, a sort of a changing of the guard, as it were, um, in the 1989-1990, and then a diff that introduced a different brand of hip hop, which was gangster rap. The rap scene more violent now. Jay took precautions. Was Jason carrying a gun for self-defense at the time? <laughs> yeah, quite sure he was. I'm quite sure he should have been. It's the day before Halloween, and there's an eerie feeling in the air. Yeah, and I'm feeling funny. Like I know something's going on. Like. Why am I feeling like this? I never felt like that before. Jam Master Jay is in his Queens, New York recording studio along with five others when... There was a buzz at the door, at the recording studio door. Two people that came in, and as soon as they got in, Jay couldn't reach for the handgun, the pistol that he had that was lying on the sofa next to him. He, he didn't have enough time to get it. Before he knew it, he was shot. And just like that, a member of one of the most influential acts in hip hop culture, gone. They told me that somebody had killed him. I said, did what? How, you know, what you mean somebody killed him? For what? It just, it just totally shocked me. I was just in total shock. NYPD homicide detective Derek Parker is retired at the time of Jay's death, but is called back to assist with the investigation. Jay was shot once in the head. Right, execution style, yes in front of a studio full of people, according to Detective Parker, five potential eyewitnesses to be exact. They all know something. Because there's no way that I'm gonna be in the studio when some killing go down and I don't know nothing. I think it was an inside job myself. I think whoever did it was already there. Former Detective Parker tends to agree with Jay's family and immediately turns his attention to the person who he says reportedly let the assailants in receptionist, Lydia High. Lydia is the person who buzzed them in. Yes, Lydia is the person that buzzed them in. Why did she buzz them in? Well, Lydia had to know who they were before she buzzed them in. It had to be somebody she knew. You spent some time talking to Lydia. I spent a lot of time talking to Lydia. Lydia and other eyewitnesses are interviewed at length by the NYPD. Names of possible suspects emerge. What are the possibilities? Was uh, Big D, uh, Darren Jordan, and Little D, his son. Darren Jordan, a.k.a. Big D, is an executive at Def Jam Records, and his son Carl Jordan, a.k.a. Little D, is a rapper. Big D and Little D. Right. What is their relationship to Jay? They were friends of Jay. They knew him from the neighborhood. Why would they want to kill Jay? Possibly, and, and this is only a theory, that they had some kind of dispute, some kind of beef, a debt, 
that Jay owed, that Jay probably couldn't pay, and this is what happened. Police question Little D, but he's released and never charged. Both father and son deny any involvement in Jay's killing. In fact, Big D is calling for justice for Jay in this documentary, two turntables and a microphone. Everybody that was in the studio at that day is a culprit and should be arrested, should have been arrested or should be buried. Then there's another person of interest, Jay's business partner, Randy Allen. From what we know, Randy uh, ran out, saw what happened. I think he had a gun or a weapon that he may have had, and he might have fired some shots at these guys when they were running as they left. So Randy hears the gunshots, walks out, sees what's happened, grabs his gun and goes after the That's two That's what we were told, yes. But just how real are his partner's seemingly heroic actions? Investigators discover an insurance policy. Turns out Randy would have a lot to gain financially if Jay died. Police wonder, could it be a possible motive for murder? This theory with Randy about the insurance money was explored by the police and, and by myself. And I don't really think that held a lot of weight. Allen was never charged and denies any involvement in the killing. But in a small studio filled with friends and fellow artists, somebody he knew did it. And according to police, someone saw who murdered Jam Master Jay. Then how you not know how somebody walk into the door and you don't see them? Why nobody know who this person is? They know they just ain't tough. Until now. And who do we think pulled the trigger? Up next, we go back to the scene of the crime with a visit to Jam Master Jay's studio. And former Detective Parker names names. I definitely believe that he's definitely one of the guys involved.